Blessings, beloved. Praise the Lord Jesus. So, I got cut off in the previous video. It happens from time to time. Um, so I was just set about saying that because of what Adam and Eve did in the garden when they partook of the, of the tree, the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the nature of man fell. So that means that man now has a knowledge of evil when before he didn't. He's now aware of evil. He has evil thoughts, evil things in his heart. Okay, so he's also aware of, of the evil thoughts that others might have about him too. And that's why he wants to put on clothes, and cover up. That's why people don't walk around in the nip, apart from the, apart, apart from the fact that it's cold. Okay. Whereas before in the Garden of Eden, there was no such thing as shame or there was no awareness that there was anything wrong with being naked. Because the ones, when there's no awareness, well then there's freedom. So that awareness can't go away. That sin nature can't go away unless Jesus changes your heart. And so Jesus, to protect our neighbour, has told us to dress in a way that is appropriate, that's not um, overtly sexual, a way that doesn't provoke lust. He has said to, that women should wear um, modest apparel. And we know that a modest woman honours men because she conceals her voluptuousness, her beauty, her fleshly uh, appeal. And she doesn't put it on show for men to see, to be drawn towards looking at, and then that could inspire lust. So a woman who is aware of this, who is, who, who, who is fundamentally aware that her, her body has this um, draw, if she's then playing on that, then God sees this as very serious. If a woman is then using her body to cause men to lust, well, then she has shown that she doesn't care about the eternal life or existence of that person. This is the word of God. That she should adorn herself in modest apparel. And focus more on the beauty, inward beauty, than the outward. The Bible tells us, look not to what is seen. Amen. Amen. So... When we simplify and we get back to basics and we get back to the fundamentals, we've got to ask ourselves, why are society promoting this form-fitting fashion? This new, it, it, I mean, it's, it's there. Ski pants have been out there for years, but not to this degree where these like really tight trousers that the women have to keep hiking up because they keep falling down are obviously um, designed by whoever's creating these trends and fashions to do just that, to cause lust within the nations, to encourage it. So whoever the fashion designer is who's coming up with these ideas, they're obviously incentivized in some way to propagate this type of fashion, this type of cut away clothing. You know, if you came, years ago, if you came out with tears in your jeans, you'd You'd be sent back to the shop to get a proper pair. Where's the rest of your jeans? You'd be asked. But nowadays it's seen as cool, trendy. Because what's being done is they're trying to encourage and promote the corrupted nature of the flesh within mankind. To bring about a worse state of fallen chaos. And it's only going to get worse unless people turn to Jesus and obey his word. It can get better in their life. Now we have to go outside the front door. We have to go and do our shopping. So this calls for strength. This calls for prayer and fasting. And we need to pray for one another as the world gets more and more debauched. 
I'm brought to think about Lot when he was um, surrounded by infidelity and idolatry and lust and fornication. The place had just had just uh, plummeted into all type of, of moral decay and moral depravity and sexual confusion and gender dis dysmorphia or dysphoria, whatever you call it. Dysphoria. The feeling of discomfort or distress that might occur in people gender identity differs so how they how they view themselves is abnormal or not the norm it differs um Yeah, and, and dysmorphia is a mental health condition where a person spends a lot of time worrying about flaws in their appearance. This is another thing, like a lot of things that are being called, um, you know, mental health conditions are things that are uh, being pumped out there by the media subliminally. You know, yeah, like they're being told subliminally that you got to look this way, you got to look that way, you got to conform in this way, you got to conform in that way. And really the only way you have to conform in is the ways of Jesus. Because he's the creator who, who created all, thing, all things to work in an ordered fashion. So that you could have life and peace and love. And so anything that doesn't obey with his commands, with his order, is destructive. By its very nature. Because it's disordered dysmorphia, dysphoria, they're disordered. They're malfunctioning. But what society wants to do now is promote malfunction as variety and diversity. Now what we should do is we should love all people no matter how they present or what problems they present with. But what we must do is tell them the truth and bring the order, the true order of God's word to them, to the masses, to the peoples, to the nations. Otherwise you're at nothing as a saint. If you're not addressing the issues of the day, if you're not exposing the unfruitful works of darkness, you're not walking in the way expose the unfruitful works of darkness bring the gospel preach the gospel preach the good news by by whatever means is available to you do it be an example in the world live a life according to the commands of god insofar as it depends on you and so in and insofar as you you, you are capable physically Or, or, or in other capacities. So the point is that we need to get back to basics. We need to have a basic understanding as to you know what is lust, what caused lust. You know why is it disordered? Why is it something that doesn't bring about peace? Why? Well, the reason is because it is the product of a this is a fallen condition, a corrupted nature, the fallen nature of the flesh. This is what is meant by the fallen nature of the flesh. That our flesh, our body, our physical nature now desires things that are not good for it. It's a brokenness, a fallenness, a defilement, a corruptedness. And so the world wants to normalize this corruptedness and say that anybody who's saying otherwise is a bigot. That they're against 
diversity and inclusiveness, that that's not love. We don't recognise that as love. But I'm saying to encourage these fallen traits is as crazy as, you know, sticking a needle full of heroin in a heroin addict's hand. It's not going to help them to improve their situation. And continuing to promote and encourage somebody who's harming themselves in what by what in whatever way they're harming themselves is abuse. It's abuse, no matter what way you slice it. Whatever way they are presenting, whatever way they are harming themselves, if they present to you and you say, Yeah, go ahead, go on, drive on there. Grand, no bother, we accept you the way you are. You are abusing them. You're deceiving them. And you're encouraging them in ways that are harmful to their nature. And we know this from the word of God. That we are to build one another up in the true faith. That is the word of God. So we need to, as a church, get back to basics really have a fundamental understanding of what it means to have a fallen nature and what it means to be born again as a result of faith in Jesus Christ. What it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to be operating in the Holy Spirit and to be obeying the word of God. And not accepting misinterpretations, reinterpretations and misinformation with respect to the Holy Scriptures. We don't accept that. We don't know it. We've nothing to do with it. It's nothing to do with us. We will answer this. We will have discussions publicly about these topics. No problem. We're not the ones that have the problem with the open open discussion. That would be the locals. It would be the businesses. That would be the the, the police. They, 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 that would be the government. They want to. It would be Facebook. That would be YouTube. They they want to shut that down. They don't want healthy discussion on these matters. They don't want it because it is counterproductive for their rollout of this abominable new world order. But as Christian preachers, we're, our concern is not uh, the rollout of the new world order. Our concern is the salvation of souls and being the light of the world. And we're not going to stop. We're not going to stop. No, we belong to the almighty God and we're going to bring his word. And we love you. We do. We truly do love you. And we don't want you to fall into deception, into corruption, into depravity. And we know there's a draw to that kind of stuff. We know pornography and children are watching that stuff younger and younger. They've access to phones and the internet and stuff. And they're watching all sorts of stuff on the online they shouldn't be exposed to nobody should be exposed to let alone little children and then there's this thing this insidious uh, position where they start putting the children in clothes that are sexualized younger and younger uh, types of clothes that would uh, you'd normally see like a woman of the night wearing we used to call them woman of the night. She would dress herself up to draw a man's eye. And they're now dressing children up like this. And then when you say, well, why are you dressing the child in a sexualized manner? Sure, that's not healthy. And they'll turn around and say, why are you sexualizing the child? You're the one drawing attention to it. You're the one pointing it out. And they'll turn it on. They'll turn it on you. Say you're the one. You're the one doing. You're the one doing it. No, you're the one putting the child in the clothes that looked like they should be on a woman of the night. But they want to turn the thing on you because you draw. You drew. You made the point. You drew attention to it. You you, you spoke about the elephant in the room, so to speak. You made the point. Oh, you're the problem. You made the point. You're the problem. 
You're the one sexualizing the children. You're the problem. No. The attire, the fashion, the type of clothing, that's what's doing it. Right? But the, no, 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 don't touch that subject. I wouldn't touch that if I was you. That topic, I wouldn't, I wouldn't broach that subject. To say, oh, you're a braver man than me, I wouldn't touch it. Well, it's not PC. It's not PC. You're only asking for trouble. But the truth of the matter is that if we don't address the fundamental issues of the fallen nature of man, if we don't address how Satan is now rolling out this new world order, how he is inculcating, indoctrinating younger and younger people into dressing a certain way, acting a certain way, talking a certain way, feeling like if they don't engage in certain activities younger and younger that they're not normal or accepted by their peers or and they're drawn into these trends and fads and these activities that are not that nobody ought to be involved in. But they do so because they don't care about the, their souls their salvation or the welfare of their soul. They don't. They don't care about it. But as the Christian preacher, we do care. And we're going to come out and talk about these things because we're not afraid to. And they want to say, well, you know, you're you're not PC, you're antisocial, you're out of order. You have to stop. Or you're going to jail. Well, Where's freedom of speech, inclusive, inclusiveness, and diversity? And for, you know, it's hypocrisy. It's hypocrisy. You can have any opinion you want so long as it's not this, 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 or this one. That's not freedom of speech. You see, God hasn't said that you can't speak, He hasn't said that you can't choose debauchery. He hasn't said that you can't choose death. He hasn't said that he hasn't removed your free will. But they're trying to do it. They're trying to remove your freedom of speech. Who are they? Who's the big they? The synagogue of Satan. They haven't changed. They're the same crew. They're still up to their stuff. They're still attacking the people of God. They're still doing it. And they won't turn back. And they're going further and further into the debaucheries. And what they once did in secret, they're now bringing it out into the public. They want to normalise it. They want to be able to do it about the streets. And that's what's meant by the New World Order. That what used to be known to be antisocial behaviour is now being spoken as social, culturally acceptable, normal, the new normal. They're not hiding it from you. They're telling you this is what we're doing now. And I'm saying God is still in the midst. You see, as Christian preachers, we're not trying to do what God can't because there's nothing he can't do. We're not here trying to fill in the blanks. The Lord has told us. He's given us a mandate. And it's not lockdown. Our mandate is preach the gospel. And expose the unfruitful works of darkness. And that's what we do. We do that. And we will not relent. We will not turn back from doing that. That's not going to happen. Because we are his children. And we have that boldness. So we continue forth, church, get back to basics. Get back to basics. Explain the fallen nature. Give people the appreciation of the importance of dressing humbly. And if you don't know what to wear, 
you know, what do I wear? You know, you don't want to stand out with your crew or whatever. Don't worry about that stuff. If people don't, you know, again, if people don't accept you because of, you know, what you're wearing and they're saying you can wear whatever you want, well, then that's hypocrisy again. You see, this is the thing about the world. It's constantly hypo hypocritical. Oh, yeah, we can wear these stuff. We wear whatever we want. But if you show up in a, a dress, you know, they'll, they might tell you you look like a curtain. So it's, it's constant hypocrisy. A beautiful dress down below the knee. The further down it goes, the better, as long as it's not trailing on the ground. Beautiful dress, covering up the cleavage, loosely fitting, flowy. And if you're cold, wear trousers underneath your dress. Because in the what if you're too hot in the summer? You won't be in a dress, a lightly coloured dress, flowing, airy. Be very cool. If you want to dress humbly, you can. Women know. So modest apparel, ladies, if you want to walk in the way. Now again, we're not going out trying to restrain what God has 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 revealed will come to pass. But we are doing what we're told to do, and that's expose the unfruitful works of darkness and preach the gospel in season and out of season. And we will not relent from these activities. We're not abusing anybody. We're telling them the truth according to the Holy Bible, according to God. And they're who they'll answer to. He's, excuse me, he's who, who they'll answer to. Jesus is who they will answer to because he is their creator. He's the mighty one. And he's going to return to the earth. <laughs> Amen. So let's get back to basics because people are off on these debates and arguments about doctrinal differences and stuff like this let's get back to basics and get our foundation right church we're living in an age where it's observe the masses and do the opposite Because that which is evil is considered good and that which is good is considered evil. That's the way it's going now. And it's only going to get worse. It's like they say, you know, saying the word paedophile is like an offence now. It's like, it's, it's almost worse to say the word paedophile in public than it is to, to, to do the act in private. You go to jail. It's 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 not on. It's not it's not it's not acceptable within society. And we need to, as people of the church, come together and say this is not what we're going to accept. If if somebody can come out and wave a rainbow flag in my face, well then surely I'm allowed to read from the Bible to them. If they come over and ask me a question according to the Holy Scriptures, well then surely I have the right to answer them according to the Holy Scriptures. If somebody can come out with a pride flag or a Man United flag or a Liverpool flag and wave that in my face, well then I can hold up a banner with the Holy Bible Scriptures in it. Otherwise there's no um, inclusiveness or, or equality otherwise we're not being held equally before the law otherwise there's an anti-religious bias within the court system so let's exp expose the unfruitful works of darkness and get back to basics
understanding the basics because they're trying to redefine the basics but let's not have it let us get back to basics let us understand the proper definition of words let us study rightly rightly divide the word of god blessings beloved jesus is seated at the right hand of the father on high in the heaven of heavens bless his holy name